Now you heard that right, Creality has been on an innovation rampage. We're talking about launching printer after printer, addressing really all the feedback that we've been giving them when it comes to the quality of the prints, uh, ease of use, also sizes of the beds, right? And then also all these accessories and different things that you can get. And what I've done is I have all three printers. This is These are all the specs, high level specs for these three printers. The Ender 3S1, the Ender 3S1 Pro, and the Ender 3S1 Plus. And I've highlighted in light blue for you some of the things that are a little bit different and why you may want to choose one versus the other. First thing that we'll highlight, the biggest difference between the S1 and the S1 Pro uh, when it comes to the Plus is going to be the print bed. And the print bed is you're looking at 300 by 300 by 300 millimeters. And at first, when you really look at the difference, you'll probably say, is it, is it that big? Does it really matter? I have to tell you, it is. And when you see our detailed comparison, you'll see how much of a difference this bed is. It really allows you to print some larger objects. Now, all these printers are going to have auto bed leveling. And one of the things that you'll find is that the actual print sheet, well, the, the actual sheet where the prints would go on to the Ender 3S1 was a PC spring sheet, right? And then when we looked at the Ender 3S1 Pro because of the materials that it's printing, that was a PEI sheet, and there's a difference between the two. But when you think about or see the 3S1 Plus, it does have a PC spring sheet again. So it's a steel sheet. It makes the prints come off easily, but it's not the same type of material that you'd find in the Pro, which in my opinion is a better one. Now, another big change that you see between the three printers is that the actual Plus um, has a different print temperature, right? So you basically go from 260 all the way up to 100C. And then even though you have the larger print bed, right, the print area is larger, it actually drops. Um, it goes back to the 3S1. So when you look at the 3S1 Pro, you do have a higher temperature for your nozzle, and then you also have a higher temperature for your bed. And that's going to give you the ability to print some materials that you don't really see available with either two. So larger uh, print surface, uh, but the temperature of your nozzle and of your bed is going to affect the type of material that you're going to print. So if you're looking to print, let's say, some higher temp material, you'll want to make sure that you understand that before you pick one of these up. Now, all three printers have the Sprite Direct Drive Extruder, but there's a big difference, right? So the Direct Drive Extruder for the 3S1 and the 3S1 Plus are kind of similar, but really not. Uh, so what you'll find is this. Uh, basically, what you have is a Teflon tube inside of the direct drive extruder for the 3S1. You have the same thing for the S1 Plus, but it's full metal, right? Now, when you think about the 3S1 Pro, that one is full metal, so there's no Teflon tube inside. And for those of you who are kind of questioning, well, why does that matter? Well, as you're printing higher temp materials, the higher the, the nozzle temperature, and you can see that this one goes up to you know, 300C, that Teflon tube would actually uh, ultimately melt. Uh, so the fact that these two, the S1 and the S1 Plus, have that Teflon tube, it kind of limits how hot they can get. And it also means that uh, you could run into clogs with each of these. So that's going to be a big difference when, when you're thinking about the print material and you're also you're thinking about the actual extruder itself. Now I will say, you can change it. If that's something that you want to do, you could go full metal. You could actually purchase these and then upgrade it as well. So uh, that's a big difference that I've seen when our print. Now, for as far as the print heads, four millimeters, right? The print nozzle um, works well in all of these. All of these are ultra quiet, but then when it comes to the print material, this is where you see now there's a difference, right? So with the Plus and the Pro, the Plus and the Pro are a little bit different, um, even though the I would say the, the Plus is very similar to the S1, but as you compare it to the Pro, you can see that the Pro can print more material types, and that's because of that full metal extruder, right? So you can do wood, PETG, PLA type materials. Now, if you're never going to print PA material, then you don't have to worry about it, right? Uh, in this case, you're going to be able to print PLA, right? You're going to be able to print ABS, you're going to print TPU and PETG. And those are the most common types. So just rest assured that there are some differences when it comes to this out of the box specs between the two. As you can see, the actual S1 Plus is closer to the S1. Now in our lineup, the very first printer that we have is the Ender 3 S1 Plus. And you can see the size difference that you have. Well, there's a lot of things that are very similar, but the size difference is, is pretty significant once you put them next to each other. Now right next to it, running a print job right now, and I'm actually doing a time lapse, is the 3 S1, Ender 3 S1. And then to the left of that, all the way at the end, that is the 3 S1 Pro. 
Now, for both versions, both the S1 Pro and the S1, uh, you know, first of all, the Pro comes with a light bar. We added the light bar to the to the S1 because I just like having the light bar integrated. I've been trying to find a light bar for the 3S1 Plus, but there isn't one available at this time. So this is kind of like to give you a sense of stature. Uh, it is significantly different or in, in size, right? It's almost, I would say, and you're going to see this in a second, right behind it, what you're going to see is kind of like over there. That is a CR10S Smart Pro, right? And the bed size, surprise, surprise, guys, it's, it's very similar, if not the same. Now, the bed size for the 3S1 Plus is significantly bigger. Now, on, on the spec side, when you look at it, you'll first say, you know, 300 millimeters versus, you know, the 250 that you have on the uh, Ender 3S1 Pro and the 3S1 can't be that significant. Well, I'm going to take this. So this is my PEI sheet from my Pro, my 3S1 Pro, and I'm just going to put it right next to it. That's how much of a difference there is. Look at this. Look up much more space. I'll put it in the center. That's pretty crazy. That's giving you a lot of print surface. If I put it even closer. That's how much more area you're getting. So if you ask me initially when I was thinking about and I saw this new version, if you're looking for a bigger print surface, uh, this is definitely has a much, much larger print surface. Now the next question is, how much difference is there between this and the CR10 S Pro? Check this out. This is the build plate. Bam. <laughs> it's the same size. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll focus on the 3S1 Plus. Uh, we'll start with the bed. So the bed is larger. We, we saw that in the specs and you saw that in the comparison. And it does have a flex sheet and one of the things I really like about the new flex sheets is that you do get these cutouts. And the reason why these are great is because they align with the screws that are in the back. And it makes it really easy for you to have a real nice alignment on every single side when you put things down. Now, you do have a couple ways that you can load prints. You have your standard SD. And then what you have is a USB-C port right here that you can use. Now, either one of these is going to give you the ability to load your content. Now, just like you see with, um, with all of the printers uh, in this lineup, you do have knob adjustments. Love the fact that there are no tools. And then what you also then have is a drawer. Now the tool drawer that you find here on the side is just a, a straight tool drawer. It doesn't have any separators or any guides. I really like the one that the, uh, the Pro has, the CR10 Pro has, because the Smart Pro has a real nice little organizer. You can actually print something to organize things in here. This is just an empty tray. Now this printer does have auto bed leveling. You do have manual adjustments that you can make um, and make any adjustments that you need. And one of the things that when we received this one during shipping, the actual adjustment wheels were not in place, they had fallen off. That happens at times. I've seen that happen with some of the other printers that we received. So all we had to do is just uh, put them in, tighten it up, and then level it. Uh, I always recommend that you do a manual leveling first, then do the auto leveling. It's just gonna make that auto leveling quality much, much better. Now the Ender 3S1 Plus does have a touch screen which is different from the 3s1 i do like the fact that it has a touch screen but i will say that it's almost like every single version of the creality products has a different operating system experience and that would be something would be great if there was a little bit more consistency with these uh, now it's closer to what i would say the 3s1 pro but there's some, some slight differences that i found you know just by using it but you have the standard thing, so you have your temperature settings, you have um, your bed uh, temperature setting, you also then have your Z. You can uh, go through the menus to print. You can go uh, look at your ready settings. This is where you would go in to have your uh, to preheat PLA, preheat EBS, right? And then you and to look at your nozzle temperatures. Uh, over here, you have also then to establish what those settings are going to be and what your languages are. Now, uh, this printer is. Uh, is capable of, of creating some beautiful prints. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up a print and we're gonna take a look at some of the prints that we've just recently printed on the device. Now, with every Creality printer, you do def definitely get some sample prints and you can see right here, this is one of the sample prints that you got. This is their Rabbit. Uh, one of the things um, I noticed is that the PLA that we had on, their, on, on our spool uh, needed to be dehydrated somewhat because I didn't really like the layers that we received. We also then printed their standard cat. So you can see what their cat looks like right here. Um, also saw a little bit more layering that I'd like to see, 
uh, but still the quality was good. That first layer line is uh, spot on as well. We also then printed out, again, this is um, standard on their SD or their SD card. So this is uh, one of the other prints. This came out nice, no supports. And we switched the filament because I wasn't really happy with the overall quality. I wanted to see you know, what was, uh, was driving that. And as you can see here, uh, we changed it to this filament and you can see how nice this quality is. Uh, I saw a, a major improvement immediately once I switched the filament. So you can see our benchy here came out really nice. Uh, this is the first level or the first layer for the benchy also came out really good. Uh, what you see in the background here is the printer starting to print. Uh, I preheated it to speed the process up, uh, but overall the print experience is, very gonna, is gonna be very similar to that, what you find to any of the newer enders. It does have the modern extruder. It does have, you know, this is gonna be um, adequate for some more abrasive type material, which is gonna be great. Um, you already know that this has a filament runout sensor. And, you know, some of the things that I did extra is I printed out this little guide here just to help with the ribbon or the cable coming out just to keep it in a certain position because we do print a lot and I wanted to make sure that you know the constant moving back and forth didn't really drive any kind of damage to this area here so I have this little support going up. One thing that I did notice is that the cable management here especially for this one um, is a little bit tight because as it comes over to the far uh, right side I noticed that it's a little taut so uh, that's just something to be aware of. Outside of that the actual print surface prints extremely well. Things stick. I have not used any glue sticks uh, to date. And just generating, going from unboxing to print is very, very fast. Now the overall design is still very similar to, you know, the entire Creality line. You see on the side right here, the dual Zs. Uh, and again, this is like super duper quiet. There's a little bit more noise going on because I actually have about five printers that are printing right now. Uh, but this machine is very similar to any of the other Creality machines. It is very, very quiet. Now, one other feature that I really like about the Ender Series and pretty much all the Creality printers, you see this really common with a lot of the printers anyway. Now, the printer does also have a filament runout sensor. Highly recommend having this connected, especially if you're going to be running overnight prints. If you're just running short prints, you can bypass it, but hey, it's there, use it, and it works. Now, as we discussed, this printer runs really quiet. Really, the only noise coming from the printer is going to be the actual fans themselves. And obviously, as the fans pick up, they get a little bit louder. I'm just going to show you what the kind of like the floor noise is, because I do have other printers going, just so you can see the overall noise in the room. All right, so this is with at least four printers that are going right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get closer to the printer, to the print head, so you can see what kind of noise it's making. Yeah, so, so it's, it's a quiet library. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Creality 3S1 Plus. Frankly, you can't go wrong with either of these. It really comes down to the print size that you're looking for. It also comes down to the materials that you're gonna print. But each one of these are great on their own. I do prefer personally, if I were to have to choose between the 3S1 and the 3S1 Plus, I do prefer the fact that I have that larger print bed. I also prefer the fact that I have the touch screen. But um, it's, a, it's a little higher cost, right? So. Think about your budget, think about what you want to print, but you can't go wrong with any of these.